silver compounds have antibacterial activity through multiple mechanisms, and this lowers the likelihood of microbial resistance. Silver nanoparticles gained attention in recent years as a potential tool in the battle against antibiotic-resistant organisms. Utilising silver compounds to target Helicobacter pylori represents one such opportunity. Lab and animal studies indicate silver nanoparticles have anti-Heliobacter pylori activity. In one animal model, silver nanoparticles were shown to safely decrease the Heliobacter pylori density, with high silver concentrations having the stronger inhibitory effect. Silver nanoparticles could potentially be used to lower the Heliobacter pylori load, increase the success of anti-Heliobacter pylori therapies. Human studies with longer observation periods are needed before clinical use becomes practical. Silver particles should not be confused with over-the-counter colloidal silver. Silver nanoparticle preparations are used in experimental settings under controlled conditions, and they have different physiochemical properties than the readily available colloidal silver. Colloidal silver has not been demonstrated in published peer-reviewed studies to have anti-Heliobacter pylori activity. In addition, colloidal silver has not been proven effective for treating any condition and it might have several side effects, including argyria, a disorder where the skin takes on a permanent bluish-grey discoloration if it's prepared incorrectly. Linolenic acid is a naturally occurring fatty acid and it's found in vegetable oils and it has antimicrobial properties. However, under normal conditions in the body, Linolenic acid is not soluble and has little antibacterial activity. Liposomal technology overcomes the barrier by incorporating linolenic acid in a complex of cholesterol and phospholipids. This creates microscopic particles called liposomes and these fuse with the Helicobacter pylori cell membrane and they effectively deliver the linolenic acid. Liposomal linolenic acid has been shown to kill Helicobacter pylori and markedly reduce its population in the stomach of mice. In addition, liposomal linolenic acid was shown to decrease the level of pro-inflammatory cytokines triggered by the Helicobacter pylori. In mice, liposomal linolenic acid was found to penetrate the gastric mucus layer where the Helicobacter pylori resides. A considerable amount of liposomal linolenic acid remained in the stomach for up to 24 hours and no toxic side effects of the treatment were observed. Acid suppression with proton pump inhibitors reduces bleeding, although the exact mechanism behind the effect is not well understood. For patients with a high risk of bleeding ulcer, current guideline recommends a single intravenous dose of a proton pump inhibitor, followed by continuous proton pump infusions for 72 hours after endoscopic treatment. However, according to a review of studies, intermittent treatment with both oral and intravenous proton pump inhibitors are as effective as a continuous infusion of proton pump inhibitors in patients with a high risk of bleeding ulcers. Intermittent proton pump therapy, oral or intravenous, has the advantage of easy administration, lower cost and low proton pump inhibitor dose than a continuous infusion of the therapy. Also, intermittent proton pump inhibitor therapy has been shown to reduce the total amount of the proton pump inhibitor used, and this might reduce the long-term side effects. A diet rich in fruit and vegetables and fibre may reduce the risk of ulcers by 50% and also help to heal existing ulcers. Polyphenols, naturally occurring compounds present throughout the plant kingdom, are obtained from the diet, mostly from fruits, vegetables, spices, grains, coffee, tea and wine. Polyphenols have considerable anti-ulcer potential. Preclinical, animal and clinical studies have shown polyphenols can influence ulcer formation and healing through the modulation of inflammation, ulcer healing qualities and anti-heliobacter pylori activity. Among the polyphenols that have demonstrated gastroprotective activity in the preclinical studies are quercetin, found in onions, apples and many other plant foods, curcumin found in turmeric, epigallagocatechin gallate or EGCG and the catechins found in green and black tea, anthocyanins found in red grapes, grape juice, red wine, cranberries and other red and purple products.
polyphenols protect against ulcers by mechanisms including the protection against the free radical damage, fortifying the mucosal defence by stimulating the production of mucus, growth factors and prostaglandins, diminishing stomach acid secretion, increasing mucosal blood flow and exerting antibacterial activity against Heliobacter pylori. Two clinical trials have found anti-Heliobacter pylori effect from virgin olive oil. In a preclinical study, polyphenols from virgin olive oil showed antibacterial activity against eight different strains of Heliobacter pylori. Extracts of spices, garlic, ginger and turmeric have exhibited anti-ulcer activity in animal models of peptic ulcer an effect that might result from protection of the mucosa against the oxidative injury and the inflammation. Ginger extract and curcumin have demonstrated anti-Heliobacter pylori activity in preclinical studies. Long before the advent of modern ulcer treatment with acid suppressing agents and antibiotics, drinking milk was commonly recommended for ulcers. In fact, in the early 20th century, a new treatment for ulcers was introduced and it consisted of hourly consumption of milk and cream along with a mixture of sodium bicarbonate or baking soda plus a calcium magnesium bismuth compound. The goal of the treatment was to neutralize stomach acid in order to allow the ulcer to heal. Within a couple of decades it was discovered that this treatment led to excessive blood calcium and metabolic alkalinity and kidney injury. This came to be called milk alkali syndrome. Interestingly, preclinical, animal and clinical studies have shown that milk components like milk protein and fat have gastroprotective properties. One randomized control trial found that milk fermented with bifidobacterium bifidum was superior to a placebo for symptom relief. Fermented dairy products like yogurt and kefir appear to promote Heliobacter pylori eradication. However, milk has been shown to delay the healing rate of duodenal ulcers and it's no longer recommended for ulcer patients and it likely stimulates the increased stomach acid production. Smokers are at twice the risk of ulcers than non-smokers. Cigarette smoking increases the chance of developing Heliobacter pylori infections. It delays the healing of ulcers and it makes ulcer recurrence more likely. Stopping smoking provides immediate benefit for ulcer healing. Alcohol can cause a direct physical injury to the stomach lining and increase the gastric acid secretion and, when consumed excessively, can promote ulcer development. Alcohol consumption increases the risk of bleeding in patients with peptic ulcer disease. Alcohol consumption should be avoided by people who have ulcers who are at high risk of developing ulcers. Psychological stress and tension is correlated with gastric and duodenal ulcers. In a study in 47 patients with peptic ulcer disease, an integrated stress management program involving seven one-hour sessions over four weeks was compared with listening to a relaxation tape. Over four months of follow-up, those who participated in the stress management program had better relief of symptoms and better ulcer healing than those who only listened to the relaxation tape. More on peptic ulcers continue on the series or for information on herbs, supplements and natural treatment plans, check out my website.